Hello, and welcome to episode one of the Gentle Knitter podcast. My name is Nicole, and I'm uh, recording from Ottawa, Ontario, where I live with my husband. And I'm very excited to join you today. Uh, I've been thinking about doing a video podcast for a while now. Um, yeah, there's just so many wonderful podcasts out there, and it's so fun to, uh, to knit along with friends from around the world. Um, I thought it would be really lovely to join that community. One of the podcasts that I'm most, um, I guess, influenced by is the Mandarine or Mandarines podcast. Um, the lovely Melody is uh, just such an inspiration to me. Uh, I just love the way she does her podcast, um, just the, the materials she uses, um, her philosophy. Um, and uh, she's a, an amazing designer too. I really uh, enjoy um, seeing all the new creations she comes up with and I've got lots of her patterns in my queue. So um, so thank you Melody for, uh, for being such an inspiration. I'm hoping that my podcast will be, um, you know, uh, along the same lines, as, if you will. Um, I'm going to jump right into it because um, I tend to talk a lot and I want to make this a relatively short um, podcast. I'm thinking I'm going to aim for about 30 minutes. Um, and I'll, the other thing I wanted to mention is that <clears throat> I have a bit of a cold, so my voice is a little hoarse and I might have to stop periodically to cough. So I'll stop the video um, so that you don't have to hear me hacking away. But I really wanted to record today because um, I kind of put it out there that I would have my first episode up um, on uh, April 17th and I really wanted to stick to that. So, so let's just jump into it. Um, first segment, I'm going to talk about what is in my knitting basket. Um, I like to keep... Uh, my knitting in baskets all over the house and uh, yes yeah, so I thought it'd be fun to show you what I'm working on um, actually the first thing I'm working on is over here and it's held in this very cute little project bag that I bought a very long time ago at a store called uh, Downtown Yarns in New York City just a simple little cotton bag so the first thing is, it's all tangled up, here we go, <clears throat> I am making uh, Hermione's Everyday Socks. Uh, the designer is, let me get my notes here, uh, Erica Luder, it's very popular free pattern on Ravelry, named after Hermione Granger, of course, of the Harry Potter book series. Um, and yes, I am a Harry Potter fan. And uh, for those who are curious, I am a Ravenclaw. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, there just seems to be so many knitters who are into Harry Potter. I love, love Harry Potter. Anyway, these socks, um, they're showing up very gray, but they're actually, the yarn is more of a duck egg blue. Uh, it's just maybe a good, it's not really showing up very well, but anyway, the uh, the yarn is Regia or Regia. Um, just a very simple. I don't have the ball band anymore. I bought this a long time ago, but it's a really pretty simple sock uh, in a very pretty simple yarn. I like using uh, commercial sock yarn. I used to knit a lot of socks in the beautiful uh, hand-painted yarns and you know for me they don't work they don't last um, they tend to felt up after a while I'm not sure what why if the superwash um, treatment that the yarn is given is maybe not as durable as the um, as the super washing on commercial yarn, but I just find that, you know, whenever I knit socks in uh, Regia or any other uh, sort of big uh, commercial yarn, 
those socks just wear like iron. And, uh, you know, I pretty much exclusively wear hand-knit socks, so I'm not going to be hand washing them. I hand wash everything else, all my other knits, I'm very careful to, uh, to hand wash, but socks, you know, I just, it would just, I'd spend all my time hand washing hand knit socks. So no, that's not happening. But um, I, yeah, I've got socks that I've had for 10, 15 years that I still wear that are still in great condition. Um, that might also be because I tend to knit my socks fairly tightly. I like a very firm fabric. Uh, these I'm actually knitting on collage square needles. They're metal needles uh, in US size 1 or 2.25 uh, uh, millimeters. Um, it's the first time I use these needles and I can't say that I'm a huge fan. The square shape of the needle, I don't know if you can see um, here, if I, if I turn it, you, you can see that the needles are square and um, apparently I had read or I had heard that they were easier to hold because, because they're square. But maybe because they're very small, uh, I find it's really sharp and it kind of hurts uh, the tips of my fingers. So. Um, I'll finish these socks it, with these needles, but I'm not sure I would knit again, uh, knit socks again with these needles. It's just not, you know, I prefer, um, I usually use either uh, double pointed uh, bamboo needles or, um, or I often also use uh, magic loop with Addy Turbos. Um, those are my two uh, kind of go-to sock um, needles, but I I thought I would try these out and uh, yeah, not not a huge fan, but it's okay. Um, all right, the next thing I'm doing is um, I am making a cardigan, um, and it's actually really <laughs> just the very beginnings. There's really nothing to see here. The name of the cardigan is, I'm not even going to try to say this, It. I'm going to spell it out. It's an Icelandic pattern, the, well the designer is Icelandic and I'm assuming this is an Icelandic word. It's R-Y and then a little, almost like a little D, R-A-N and then another one of those little kind of swirly Ds. Um, no idea. I, I did look up how to pronounce that swirly letter and um, it's not a D. It's it's something like A or A or... Anyway, I tried to work out how to say this pattern name and I, I couldn't. Um, I do know that the word means rusty because I put it in Google Translate. Um, the pattern is by a designer named Stainen... Birna Gud Jons Dottir, or something like that. Again, I my Icelandic needs work, obviously. Um, it's a beautiful pattern. Um, let me show you. I'm actually going to pause this for a second and bring up the pattern on my right. iPad. Here is, um, I don't know if here, there's a lot of reflection there. Um, it's the most beautiful version in the history of the world, knit by <laughs> uh, Lori Times Five, uh, Lori Ann Graham. She's a divine knitter, a divine person. I actually had the uh, great pleasure of um, going on a trip with her. I went to Shetland on a trip organized by Gudrun Johnson and um, Mary Jane Mucklestone. And uh, Lori was also on the trip and I got to know her. She's, she's just such a lovely, talented, um, warm person. I, I really, I consider her a friend and uh, I really hope, I no, I don't hope, I know that one day 
we'll get to uh, visit again and uh, I can't wait. But anyway, so she knit this gorgeous cardigan. I wish I could find, here's another picture of her wearing the cardigan, holding up a nice landing shawl that she knit. She is like, wow. Just everything she does is so beautiful. Anyway, as soon as I saw that on her Instagram feed, I'm like, I need that. I need that, sh uh, well, the shawl too, but <laughs> let's start with the cardigan. Um, and um, I just happened to have the yarn, and uh, actually, I bought the yarn on the same trip that I was, uh, when I went to Shetland, I actually flew with Iceland Air. And um, I don't know if this is still the case, but at the time, if you flew to Europe through uh, Iceland Air, um, you stop over in Reykjavik and uh, you can do a layover. So I ended up uh, spending a week in Iceland uh, at the end, um, after my Shetland trip. And um, I went to the, uh, the Istex uh, factory where they make all the Lopi yarn and bought some of this really cool and very um, different yarn. It's, um, the yarn itself is called Plotulopi and uh, it is a, uh, an, a single, oh, oh that's, that shows you what the yarn is like. It's a, a single strand that is unspun and it is, because it's unspun, it's very, 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 very delicate. And so when you're knitting with it, you have to be very careful not to tug on it because it just falls apart. But, um, but if you're careful and uh, basically I, um, I kind of carefully uh, and very loosely um, s rolled it up into a ball and then when I'm knitting, I'm, I'm carefully pulling yarn, sort of unwinding yarn off of the ball um, and making sure that I have a lot of slack when I'm <clears throat> when I'm working with it so that I'm not ever pulling on it and once it's knit up it actually creates a very nice and solid fabric once it's uh, once it's in there um, it kind of acts as, as twist and it gives the the uh, the yarn a lot of strength and lopi yarn is um, you know there's a lot of long hairs there so it's actually is a strong yarn um, it's it's light and um, and airy and incredibly warm and um, I love it I absolutely love Lopi it's not the softest um, yarn in the history of the world but I don't mind that I actually have quite a tolerance for um, for prickle uh, and uh, I like rusticy yarns. I like yarns that sort of have that wooly, wooliness to it. So I'm super excited about this and I'm hoping it'll knit up fast. I just started it like yesterday. So, uh, so that's, um, that's my first, uh, well, no, my second project. Um, before I forget, I should mention that, um, I will be probably recording once a month. Um, I would love to record more often, but frankly, I'm not sure that's realistic. And the main reason is because, as uh, some of you may know, I do a lot of sample knitting for designers. And um, it takes up a lot of my knitting time. I'm often, I pretty much always have a sample on the go. Uh, usually they're sweaters, so that takes up a lot of my knitting time and um, I'm not going to be able to show you the stuff I'm working on when it's a sample. Um, you know, I can show you once the the garment is published, but then I don't have it in my possession, but I'll, I'll show you photos of things that I've knit. But um, yeah, so I, if I, um, if I were to try and record more often, I really wouldn't have much to show you. I will only be able to show you the stuff that I'm working on for myself. So okay, sorry, I um, I went on a little coughing uh, fit there. Anyway, back to what's in my knitting basket. 
The last uh, progress, work in progress that I wanted to show you is, um, is a shawl, a gigantic shawl. It's the Big Star Shawl by Julia Billings, uh, also known as Woolen Flower. Another amazing, wonderful, super talented, incredible uh, designer that I very much admire. I love everything this woman does. She um, she also makes these beautiful project bags out of um, tweed fabrics, and I I covet them. And one day I will buy one. But um, actually, when I was at um, a thrift store a couple of weeks back, um, I uh, I found these Harris tweed uh, jackets, like big men's um, uh, blazers, and the fabrics were so beautiful, and they were you know, they were really cheap. They were like, I don't know, four ninety nine or something. And I so I bought three thinking that um, I might sort of take them apart and reuse the fabric. And and basically uh, that's because of um, of Julia's uh, you know, I've been inspired by Julia. As you can it's the theme, right? I I'm inspired by a lot of people and uh, I'm so grateful that um, we have access to all of this creativity now with the internet. Um, you know, I started knitting over 20 years ago, and back then there was no Ravelry, there was no internet, and uh, most of the, you know, all of the knitting I did was either from a book or from a magazine, um, and uh, now it's just, there's just so much out there and, and um, you know, so much sharing of information and, um, it's just, oh, I love it. It's such a wonderful, wonderful thing, especially for somebody like me. I'm, um, I'm quite introverted. I'm not shy, but uh, I'm somebody who loves to spend time uh, by myself doing quiet things. That's a little bit where the uh, the name of the podcast comes from. Um, I just like to have a, a quiet, gentle life, and. Um, you know, knitting really gives me that knitting and, and other um, creative pursuits. I do, I do some sewing. Um, I draw. I love to read. Um, I've done a little bit of quilting. I'd like to get into it more. Um, and I also love to make. Um, I'm really into uh, herbal medicine, so I, I like to uh, wild craft. Um, different herbs and make my own tinctures and, and uh, tea blends and that kind of thing. So I might talk about those things as I uh, as the podcast uh, evolves. But um, but yeah, just to get back to what I was saying, uh, the internet has been just such a wonderful way to connect with people um, through uh, through blogs through. Uh, Ravelry through Instagram, um, a podcast. It's just uh, you just get exposed to all these incredible creative people, and it, it's so inspiring. And it just makes me want to make everything. <laughs> and it's hard because I don't have enough time. You know, I work full time. And anyway, um, but. Needless to say, I am inspired by a lot of you out there, and thank you. Thank you for the inspiration. So, to get back to, that was a bit of a tangent, to get back to uh, what I was talking about, this is the Big Star Shawl. Um, here, I will show you a better picture of it. I've got one here. Just give me a sec. All right, here we go. Uh, oh, here is a kind of a close-up of the shawl it's um it's made in garter it's all in garter and it's got a lovely lace and a fringe which i think i will add i'm not normally a fringy person but uh, i don't know i've seen lots of um, finished projects with the fringe uh, one in particular is uh, lee side knits um, Lee, hello Lee. Um, she actually lives in my area and I'm hoping that we're gonna get to meet 
meet up soon. Um, I think she's going to come and visit the museum I work at. But uh, anyway, she did a version with the fringe. And um, again, you know, I'm just fangirling all over people. Uh, whatever Lee does, I want to do. So um, yeah, that's that's Julia's picture. It's, it's a very big, generous, cozy, cozy shawl. And I'm knitting it in, this is not a great, here, that the color is a bit more um, accurate here. It's a beautiful, kind of dark teal blue. Where did the yarn go? I lost the yarn. Ah! Oh, <laughs> here it is. Okay. Um, it The yarn is a Briggs and Little Sport. And the color name is, it's called Seafoam. Mm. Color name fail. Uh, this is not Seafoam. It's it's a very beautiful, um, it's a little greener than it's showing there. It's, it's more teal. Um, and uh, I love this very uh, rustic yarn. Uh, Briggs and Little, Briggs and Little, is a Canadian company and uh, I believe they manufacture in New Brunswick. Yes, Harvey, oh, Briggs and Little Woolen Mills Limited, Harvey York Co. NB. Anyway, New Brunswick, my, uh, where I was born, I was born in Moncton, New Brunswick. Um, so it's, it's a very rustic, uh, yarn it's again not super super soft although i don't find it that bad um but warm it's a single ply it's uh it's very inexpensive and you get a lot um let's see for 100 grams um 430 yards so almost 400 meters per skein and uh yeah it's it's a real workhorse i use it quite a bit i think it's beautiful it's got lots of flex. It's very, um, very tweedy. It's got dark gray, uh, brighter teal, some green, um, a little bit like some filaments of paler gray. I love this yarn. So anyway, I'm very excited. Um, it's going to be huge. It starts off uh, with the edge. So you're basically, uh, you cast on the full width of the of the shawl and then uh, then it decreases to um, to the the narrower part of the shawl and um, I really like this type of lace it's sort of uh, I love garter e lace and I love um, I love lace that's a little more maybe geometric than than lacy lacy um, which is why I love, um, I do love haps. I love, um, I love the traditional sort of workhorse uh, shawls, um, the Faroese shawls. Um, they just, um, they really appeal to me and I find them very wearable. Speaking of which, um, what am I wearing? So um, what's keeping me warm? This is gonna be the segment where I talk about uh, finished objects. And this is uh, the shawl, the pattern is called Lala's Simple Shawl by Laura Linneman. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, a very popular pattern. Actually, uh, I was showing you the wrong side, which I prefer, uh, but this, so this is the right side. It's a very, very simple, it's lovely because it's uh, alternating uh, garter sections and then stockingette and then, and then a row of uh, lacy yarn overs. But um, I actually, I really like it on this side. I don't know why. Um, maybe, I, I just love the look of garter. And I also love that um, for this yarn, it kind of, um, it softens the transition of colors. So the yarn I used for this is uh, County uh, Garn, no, what's it called? County, oh dear, County Effect Garn. It's a sport weight yarn. 
and I'm sure a lot of you know this yarn. It actually um, has shorter repeats than this. It's a yarn that goes from like pale medium to very dark gray in, in sort of shorter repeats, but I saw somebody do this uh, somewhere on Ravelry a while ago where they took a ball of, of the yarn and they basically um, broke it apart into segments. So they unraveled it and, and created um, you know different piles of the different colors and then put it all to put it all uh, back together again. And I loved the effect. So I, one night, I just took my ball and I, I took it all apart and um, spit spliced it all back up again and created this kind of long uh, repeat of, uh, of pale to very dark, almost black, uh, you know, the different shades of gray. And I really love, love, love how it turned out. You can see a little bit better there. Um, I love gray. I'm, I'm really, I love neutrals and I love blue and you're going to see a lot of that in my podcast, but, um, they're, they're my favorite colors and I really love the shawl. It's so easy, so quick. And, um, you know, with the spit splicing method, um, I didn't have to, there were no ends. Um, for those of you who don't know, spit splicing is when you take, um, so, Let's pretend <clears throat> this is normal yarn that's that's plied and spun. You would break it, and then you take the two ragged ends, and you sort of uh, kind of lay them on top of each other, and, and sort of try and and kind of get the fibers to to sort of uh, interlock again. And then you wet it, so you can either uh, put it, dunk it in your tea or you can put it under the tap or what I do because I'm lazy is you put it in your mouth and you wet it and then you take that section that wet section and you put it in your palm and you rub it really really furiously and that uh, basically felts the two ends together and uh, makes it uh, a, a join that is basically you know it's solid it's it's good and this is I use this for everything um, I, I you know do spit splicing all the time unless I'm using superwash which is really only when I'm doing socks um, because uh, it just makes it so much easier you don't have any ends to darn except for you know the last the last little bit so I love it um, just gonna have a little tea break mm. by the way this beautiful teacup is um, was done by a local uh, potter her name is Maureen Marcotte and uh, she is I have a lot of her pottery it's oh, so beautiful and she's a knitter and so some of her pottery actually the designs of some of her pottery have kind of knitting patterns in them so anyway I'll show you some of those on a different podcast but I love her pottery I love pottery in general uh, a lot of the, my pottery is is thrifted I um, I would just go to you know uh, Salvation Army or Valley Village and find um, nice uh, old 70s that really granola pottery that I absolutely love and partly because it reminds me of my childhood but um, anyway I'll probably be showing you a lot of my different cups because I will pr pretty much always have a cup of tea by me um, I don't know if I told you I can't remember now because I've actually recorded several times. I've been having some technical difficulties. But the tea I'm drinking is uh, is a tea that I made myself. Uh, I call this blend the Gentle Flowers Blend because it is basically uh, mostly chamomile, uh, lavender, and rose petals. And it's very fragrant. It's uh, very soothing for my throat. And uh, it's just lovely. I love it. So so I might be telling you a little bit about my different herbally concoctions um, just because I, I love tea and I know a lot of 
other knitters do too. So, um, so this is one of my finished objects. And then the last finished, finished object that I wanted to talk to you about is a little vest that I made in gray. I promise not everything I knit will be gray, but anyway, the, this one is, um, it's called the Sycamore Vest by Hannah Fettig and um, it's a very cute little vest. Um, I ended up knitting it, it's maybe a little too big for me. Uh, I knit the fourth size, um, but that's okay. Um, I haven't, um, well I have blocked it, but uh, I might, don't tell anybody, I might actually throw it in the dryer for a few minutes, which I know, I know, not a good idea. I've done it before for other things and you know, I'm. I, it's not like I put it in the dryer and then walk away and then come back an hour later. I, I put it in the dryer and literally like check it every two minutes. So I don't know, we'll see. I might just find somebody else to give it to, but um, it's really pretty. I love the edging here. It's kind of like a, like a chevron-y, herring bony kind of uh, detail at the edge and uh, the other thing I like too is that the uh, the armholes have a little bit of uh, stocking stitch um, just you pick up the stitches and then you just knit a little bit of uh, stocking at stitch and it rolls over and creates this really nice little neat edge I like I like that a lot the pattern, like I said, is by Hannah Fettig, and it's from her Home and Away book. I'm sorry, everything is, uh, as you can see, um, uh, backwards, and I will figure out how to fix that, but I just don't know how to do that yet. Um, I love this book. It's got a lot of gorgeous designs. I actually knit a sample for this book. Let me show you. It's called The Mop the Moto Jacket, or the Moto Jacket. Uh, here it is. I think it's the Moto Jacket. It's so cute, I love it. So I, I knit this sample. Uh, it's always fun to see things that I've knit uh, in a book, you know? Um, especially, you know, these designers like Hannah, like Carrie Bostick, Hogue, Hodge, Hogue. <laughs> Sorry, Carrie. I, I never know how to pronounce your name. Uh, Matter is her design name. Um, so Carrie and then Brooklyn Tweed, they take the most beautiful photos and just the styling and everything. I'm always just, I'm always so excited to see things that I've made in their books. Um, anyway, I love this book and the next thing I probably will cast on for myself is another pattern from this book. And I can't seem to find it. I should look in the. It is the Georgetown cardigan. Uh, I've actually ordered the yarn. I have a, uh, a credit at my local yarn store. So um, I don't know if you can see it. It's a, just a very simple, classic cardigan with a. A beautiful uh, folded over shawl collar, not a shawl collar, but I guess a folded over collar. Um, here's the back. Oh, it's so pretty. Anyway, I've ordered, uh, it's knit in Owl, Quince and Company Owl, and, um, and I've ordered it and it's on back order. So I'm going to have to wait till, sorry, I'm just going to shift. <clears throat> I have to wait till it's it's back in. But uh, anyway, speaking of Quince & Co, um, this little vest was made in uh, Chickadee. Quince & Co, Chickadee, and the Kumuyans Gull um, colorway. It's a really pretty gray. And guess what color my Georgetown will be in? Gray. Anyway, I'm sorry. It's not all going to be gray, but it'll probably 90% be gray and then the rest blue but anyway those are just the colors I like um you know what I think that's it for me for today I'm sure I've forgotten to tell you a thousand things that I planned on telling you but we're already at 36 minutes and uh yeah that's that's plenty of time for my first 
podcast. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you like what you heard, um, feel free to subscribe. You can hit the subscribe button on YouTube. I will also be posting uh, the videos on uh, my blog, coconits.blogspot.com. Eventually I'll be changing that though. I will, uh, I'll probably be creating a new blog, uh, a gentle knitter blog, because um, when I started my blog many, many moons ago, um, I didn't know that there was a design company called Coco Knits. And uh, so my blog and my Ravelry name and even uh, for a time my Instagram was Coco Knits and I would get a lot of messages for the designer, uh, Julie Weisenberg, who, who owns the company Coco Knits. And um, so it was, I was constantly having to forward her uh, all these messages and uh, people would confuse me with the designer. So I thought, oh, I'm going to change the name. Uh, to the gentle knitter so eventually I will uh, redesign uh, a new blog but one step at a time uh, the podcast is is already a big undertaking for me so we'll start with that and uh, and eventually I'll let you know when uh, when I move um, my pod when I move my blog and hopefully I'll be a little more active on the blog because poor blog been so neglected and even Instagram I'm not I'm not super good on those because I don't have an iPhone uh, the phone I have is uh, I only have a work phone and it takes terrible pictures and uh, I have a DSLR but I haven't really figured out how to transfer those photos onto Instagram in an easy way so Anyway, eventually I'll figure all that out, but uh, for now, I will leave you here, and uh, I thank you again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right? Bye.